there has been a lot of controversy over parental rights lately, especially related to public schools. From the teaching of critical race theory to drag queen story hours, there have been situations where the relationships between the parents and the school district have become outright hostile. Since the 1932 case Meyer v. Nebraska, the Supreme Court has recognized the right of parents to direct the education of their children as being protected under the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. This was reinforced by the 2000 case Troxel v. Granville, which stated, The 14th Amendment's Due Process Clause has a substantive component that provides heightened protection against government interference with certain fundamental rights and liberty interests, including parents' fundamental right to make decisions concerning the care, custody, and control of their children. However, when Parents Protecting Our Children sued the Eau Claire School District for putting in place a policy that directly infringed on their right to make decisions concerning the care, custody, and control of their children, both the district and certain courts punted the question, claiming the parents did not have standing. We start with the policy in question. In 2021, the Eau Claire Area School District promulgated the Administrative Guidance for Gender Identity Support. The administrative guidance aims to foster inclusive and welcoming environments that are free from discrimination, harassment, and bullying, regardless of sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. To this end, the document provides guidelines for schools to follow to address the needs of transgender, non-binary, and or gender nonconforming students. Like other schools, the Eau Claire School District finds itself in the middle of the transgender controversy. It therefore decides to put in place guidelines to help prevent discrimination, harassment, and bullying. I think that's a reasonable precaution for the school district to take and a laudable goal. Its unfortunate implementation, though, leaves a lot to be desired. The process envisioned by the administrative guidance recognizes that either students or parents may contact school officials with questions, concerns, or requests bearing on matters of student gender identity. By its term, the guidance acknowledges the delicacy and sensitivity of these matters, including the possibility that some students might not be open at home for reasons that may include safety concerns or lack of acceptance. For that reason, school personnel should speak with the student first before discussing a student's gender nonconformity or transgender status with the student's parent or guardian. So far, so good. The school appears to want open communication between themselves and both the students and parents. I don't have a problem with a school talking with a student before discussing their gender nonconformity or transgender status with the parents, but the vision of inclusive and welcoming seems to quickly dissipate. In 2022, the school district prepared a template gender support plan. Like the administrative guidance, the support plan recognizes that circumstances may arise where parents are not involved in creating this plan, in which case the plan directs school officials that it shall be made clear to the student that this plan is a student record and will be released to parents when they request it. This disclosure commitment gives effect to the school district's acknowledgement that a support plan is not a privileged document between the student and the school district. The support plan may not be a privileged document, but how are parents supposed to know they can request it if they don't even know it exists?